Well, good evening, everyone, and welcome to, to Table Talk. Feel free to just continue, get your refreshments if you want some refreshments. Uh, it's good that you, you're here this evening. Um, uh, before we, we get into the Table Talk, um, I'm going to just, there's a few notices. Uh, the lady's social location has changed, I believe, to the Babenko's house. <laughs> I think I think it's because Sergey's away. Is that is that news to you? There you go. The lady social has been moved to your house. Yeah, no, that's that's good. Right, so it's not. <laughs> uh, yes. So uh, I'll try and remember to make that change in the Friday email as well. Um, but yes, uh, make note of that. Uh, it's small groups this week, so just be aware, um, uh, whatever small group you're in. If you're not in a small group, you'd like to be in one, then come see me or one of the elders. Um, <laughs> and uh, just remember next week, uh, we um, in the evening, it's communion, and any and Evans will be leading uh, and preaching uh, in, uh, next Sunday evening. Let me pray, and then we'll, we'll get cracking. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the gospel. We thank you for Jesus. And Lord, we pray that you would equip us and help us to know how best to share the gospel. Lord, we, we probably all have hearts to do this, and we all probably are aware of our shortcomings in doing this. And likely nobody in this room are experts in doing this. Uh, so Lord, help us by your spirit now. Lord, we just use something to... Give us maybe confidence or equip us in some way, Lord, to be able to reach the people uh, that, that are in our lives that uh, desperately need to hear the gospel. Lord, we pray. Amen. Uh, so, uh, as you may know, we're, we're looking at making the most of opportunities this evening. And I, and I do want to say, just because I'm at the front I ain't an expert in this, uh, and, and I don't think there is a silver bullet in this either. I don't think there is a, 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 a strategy of, of sorts or some kind of tactic that, that you can just kind of lay out and it works every time. Uh, it depends on the context, on the person. Everybody's different. All contexts are different, and so you have to bear that in mind. Um, but we're going to give it a stab. Uh, it's, it is important. Uh, it is a as I, as I prayed, probably something we're all keenly aware of our shortcomings in. Uh, we could do better, I think. Um, so uh, let's pray and, and hope that this evening will be a, a, a help to us. Uh, so with that, uh, probably is a good question to ask. Just a question I often ask at the beginning is, uh, uh, what are some of the reasons we don't make the most of gospel opportunities? It's always perhaps good to just start with why. Why, why are we struggling in this? Uh, and then we'll, we'll look at uh, some of the more important questions leading into that might help us uh, and equip us. So just a few minutes, not, not many minutes, just uh, talking and answering this question.
You don't want to be that person that you want to be. No, exactly. But when else do you do it? Right, we'll uh, bring the conversation to a close. I suspect that's probably the easiest question to answer this evening because it's probably the answer that we're all, we probably have answers to. Um, uh, anybody want to uh, put, put your hand up and my lovely assistant will come with a mic. Um, Brandon. Uh, uh, anybody want to give a beginning answer? Uh, they, there'll probably be some overlap. I think we had two main things. One was uh, fear of what people think of us, that yeah. we might think we're an odd bod. And the other thing, well, Sergey was saying most people would be antagonistic because uh, 
they're not interested in God or the enemies of God, he said. But the other thing, I, other thing we went on to discuss, it, it might spoil our relationship with people. So we, we tried to sort of underplay or backpedal or soften the edges mm. because we live in an age where you're supposed to tolerate everybody's belief. And if people think we're odd, it'll spoil our relationship with people at work, with our neighbours, with, with our families and with our sort of friends who are non-Christian. Yeah, thanks, Dennis. I think that's... Uh, I, I think... Uh, did everybody mention fear? Fear of man? Um, uh, Rico Tice, have you heard of Rico Tice? He's got a little book called Honest Evangelism. Uh, and he, he has this... In one chapter, he, I think he talks about the phrase a, a pain line or a pain barrier that we all have to cross uh, to, to do evangelism. And, and it hurts to cross that barrier because it's... You know, we, we are entering into the unknown in, in one sense, and it, and it could it, it could end up being that we get rejected or say something that makes us look silly or whatever. Um, so yeah, it's uh, I think fear is the number one uh, barrier or thing stopping us from making the most of gospel opportunities. Anybody else? Um, yeah, the guy with the mic. Hi. Steve. All right. um, <laughs> yeah, we had the same answers, but also worried that you're not going to have the right response. You know, being asked a question you can't answer. Yeah. Uh, also, like the business of life, are we really prioritizing this over everything else? I think that's a great, that's a great addition. So yeah, there's different types of fears and being afraid, isn't they? Uh, worrying that you don't know the answer, I can definitely relate to. And then yes, busyness, priorities. I think it's a, it's a big thing. Um, uh, we, have to, we do have to be realistic and we don't want to guilt trip people. Some people live a very busy life, but at the same time, we do want to kind of make sure that this is in our radar or on our radar. And uh, as a, certainly as a church, we prioritize it. Uh, Mike? Just adding a little bit to what was said on the question of fear, um, opportunities in work sometimes preclude or we're afraid of what will happen if we speak up. Yeah. Uh, the other thing that we th I thought about was the question of sometimes you just don't see the opportunity when it yeah. hits you between the eyes, yeah. or you think about it half an hour later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah definitely. Uh, hands up, everybody had that experience. <laughs> yeah. And you think of the best answer ever, yeah. but it's 30 minutes later. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Um, yeah, so again, I think that's, um, I think sometimes that's us just not being prepared to think about opportunities when they're, when they're there, but sometimes it might be that, you know, for various different reasons, we might have just been really tired and just, you know, there's lots of, there's lots of reasons why, why we might miss those opportunities. Um, let me, let me move on. Um, as I said, that's probably the easiest question to answer. Uh, let me read some of uh, Colossians, um, this is where we get the little phrase, um, make the most of every opportunity, or it could be translated, make the most of, of your time. Um, this is Paul, uh, where he says, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful and thankful. And pray for us too, that God may open a door for our message, so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ, for which I am in chains. Pray that I may proclaim it clearly as I should. Be wise in the way you act towards outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. There you go. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. Um, I'm not gonna, I don't want to spend too long just looking at this, but it, it, it does strike me that one, perhaps one reason why we don't make the most of opportunities is such an obvious reason. It is our lack of prayer that we don't pray that God would send us opportunities and we'd make the most of opportunities. It just really, it's interesting how Paul starts, devote yourselves to prayer, being watchful. So being watchful. Uh, you can maybe in the context, being watchful for those opportunities. Uh, and obviously thankful for what God has done. And then, and then Paul says, pray for us too. So this is the Apostle Paul, the great evangelist, the great <laughs> missionary, who says, I need prayer that God may open a door for our message so that we may proclaim the mystery of Christ. And then he gets even more personal. He says, pray that I may proclaim it clearly. And so but Paul, perhaps at times he struggled to just clearly 
explain the gospel and he needed prayer and if he needs prayer to explain the gospel then we certainly need prayer we need to be praying for ourselves um and so i i think from this let's 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 put prayer on that answer uh let's pray to open up doors pray to proclaim the gospel clearly pray for wisdom and grace in our actions and speech as well you see there uh, you know in in verse five be wise in the way you act towards outsiders i think that's really important and then uh, pray for your speech to be full of grace and salt. So I think the, the idea there is, uh, in terms of salt, there's, a, there's an attractiveness, a winsomeness uh, to your speech. What you say and how you say it is important too. Um, so our tone and everything is important as we're speaking. You know, sometimes we can come across it. Sometimes when you've got the opportunity, the adrenaline kicks in and you can start, you can come across as being quite, um, uh, what's the word, uh, combative. Uh, is that right? Is that a word? Yeah. Uh, quite, just uh, almost too kind of keen and uh, almost aggressive. Um, and so we've got to watch how we, what we say, how we say as well as what we say. Uh, so um, just bear that, bear that in mind. Um, I think that, you know let's let's be let's be praying at the very least if we if we learn one thing from this evening we can pray can't we we can pray that god would help us to make the most of opportunities um let's move on to the next question this is a i hope you understand what i mean by this question and i think um verse five of colossians might help us be wise in the way you act towards outsiders what does it look like to make the most of opportunities i think that's really important what it what does making the most of opportunities look like? Especially if you've only got 30 seconds. <laughs> you know, it's, what, what, what does a win look like? Uh, and again, that will obviously depend on context, person, relationship. But just, just have a little, just a brief, brief discussion on what you think it looks like. Is, is making the most of opportunities a full explanation of the gospel every time? Have a little chat. Thank you. 
Are you, are you finished in your conversation? <laughs> One more minute. <laughs> Right, let's bring the conversation to a close. So again, um, if you want to put your hand up and what, what does it look like to make the most of opportunities? Do we, is it, is, is every opportunity we have, does it need to be proclaiming the gospel in its fullest sense? Steve. Yeah, we should, said, oh, that's loud. We said just showing love and compassion and um, yeah. not trying to force the gospel down the throat, but may, maybe showing personal testimony and things like that, um, but not trying to be forceful with it. But also we need to really understand that we are there just to plant a seed, um, but that may not grow for quite a while. And maybe it's God's will for someone else to come along and help that grow. Yeah, yeah. So... You know, we need to not force the outcome. Yeah, I think resting in the sovereignty of God in evangelism is uh, really important. Um, 
Yeah, and I think that's it. Um, yeah, and a personal testimony. Yeah, I think that's a really good one. Um, how the gospel has changed my life. Makes it more personal, doesn't it? Maybe more kind of just approachable. Um, anybody else? Colin's got... See, this is Katie's example. I thought it was really good. You, 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 if you think of, of maybe the gospel on sort of 10 points, and then you have an opportunity to speak to someone, maybe someone you don't know at all, but you think, oh, I'm not going to bother because I'll never see them again. But, but what you say, even though it might only be a 30-second thing or less, you don't know where they are in those 10 points. Mm -hmm. They might be at point, point one, and you've, you've moved them to point two. Mm -hmm. They might be at point nine, and you've moved them to point 10. And it's all in the sovereignty of God, obviously. But it's, it's never not worthwhile yep. saying something when you think about it. <laughs> Is the... Is there some scenarios where it might not be right to say something? Yeah? It... Sorry, yeah. I had the experience in, uh, when I was in the army, they used to put me in, on bar duty because I didn't drink. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> yeah. and so around about nine o'clock, everybody would be starting drinking and, and they'd come up to me about half past nine, hey, you're a Christian, tell me about it. <laughs> And I said, look, I'll tell you what, I'm a bit busy at the moment. Come tomorrow morning at 9 o'clock and we'll talk. They never came. <laughs> but no, it, I, I didn't think it was appropriate that when he was drunk for, to start sharing the gospel with him. Uh, yeah, no, I can see that maybe. Uh, I, think, I think there are some situations where we have to be careful. Um, uh. Uh, we were just um, talking about how... Sometimes we think making the most of opportunities means to be all about what we say and what we're getting into the conversation, but sometimes it's about listening to the other person and finding out where they are, what, um, what is their perception of things, and then in the future we might be able to say something that just challenges those perceptions. But if we've got this idea of, right, I've got to say this and I've got to get that in, we're not, we're, we're not even doing the normal business of just normally listening to someone as we would with any other thing. That's, um, a, that's a great segue into the third question, I think. Um, <laughs> well done, Beth. Um, uh, which is really the... Uh, I'm not, I wouldn't say it's going to be the main, the main part. Or the main part, we're going to have some scenarios. Those are scary, I don't know. Um, um, <laughs> but the, the, this, is, uh, this is kind of the main question in one sense. Uh, and I think Beth's begun, begun to answer it. What does it look like? Uh, what, what have you found helpful in order to make the most of opportunities? So what are the things that you should be doing? What are the tactics you could say? What are the, some of the, just the, the ways you can approach these opportunities? The things you say, the things you don't say, uh, etc. cetera. Um, what have you found helpful? Um, but maybe five, if, if the conversation's flowing, we'll go longer, but about five minutes. Uh, on this.
Right, let's start wrapping up the conversation. Um, and as you're, as you're wrapping up the conversation, uh, Noah, can you just move on to the next slide? Um, famous verse to many of us, Peter and 1 Peter 3, 15. But in your hearts revere Christ as Lord. Always be prepared to give an answer to everyone who asks you to give the reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Um, I, I think it's such an it is such an important verse to remember. All all parts of it. Uh, in your heart, revere Christ as Lord. I think that the worshipful element of 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 fearing the Lord and and being in awe of the Lord will help you. Uh, but always be prepared. There's an there's an element of we need to be prepared. We need to be prepared to to give an answer to everyone who asks us to give the, the reason for the hope that you have, and and that's Jesus. That's the gospel. So we need to be prepared to have some kind of gospel answer stocked away. And then I think we need to prepare as we maybe come across certain objections or questions to, to, to be prepared to do a little bit of the hard work and think about how we could answer those questions. Um, uh, here's, a, here's a few um, I, things that I've, I've, I've put down and then I'll, uh, we can go around the room, see if there was anything else. Um, Make the most of opportunities. Listening, such an important thing. Uh, at the end of the day, it's a, we want to have a conversation, not a monologue. And uh, listening shows we care. Listening shows we love. And, and actually, some of the situations, we need to listen well to know how to answer uh, well. Uh, so we need to be, yeah, we really need to be listening well. Um, I think asking questions is one of the best ways uh jesus did it uh and if jesus does it then why 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 shouldn't we do it i think there's some i think a lot of people especially if they're coming in with objections usually come over objections with the conclusion to an argument and they might not necessarily have the you know if you were writing an essay the main body to support that argument so one of the best questions to ask if somebody comes up with an objection or something that sounds like an objection is how did you come to that conclusion it a gives you time to think but it be it it, it it puts it puts it on the other foot it, it it means that they have to kind of justify their statement they're going to make a statement an objection can they answer can they give reasons why they object i think that's that's hands down one of the best uh, questions to ask how did you come to that conclusion or you could say why why did you say that you can say it in different ways why do you say that or if you've uh, if you want to kind of be the instigator you could always uh, and maybe you you've if you if you've read the book or heard the talk by Andy Bannister you could ask the question have you ever ever wondered and then you could say i don't know have you ever wondered why we love so much it's just something if you want to be the instigator the the one that starts a conversation i think they're really good questions to ask um again that's that's Andy Bannister if you were at Connected Conference last year, and you just got, just got a book out by the same uh, title, have you ever wondered? Um, I, I, and that sounds a bit um, highbrow, doesn't it? Aware of key meta-narratives. What I mean is, there are, there are certain themes in culture that everybody talks about or thinks about. Justice, love, goodness, beauty, hope, um, and many more, identity. 
uh, how can you know if if somebody's talking about something around justice or hope? How can how can the gospel answer? How can we bring the gospel into into that conversation? So I think being aware of of that, how how can how does how does the gospel answer justice or people's cry for justice? How does the the gospel answer people's cry for hope? How does the gospel answer people cry for love, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Um, uh, I think there's a, to a degree there's an element where um, it's generational. Um, uh, I think the younger people, maybe my generation, we're more kind of ex- existential in our thinking and kind of that angst. <laughs> um, and some, 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 you know, I can, my granddad's generation, it would just get on with it, don't you? Um, so it is, it is, there is a genera- generational thing. Um, but still, I think that's uh, something to be aware of. I, I think this as well is really important. Be prepared to say, I don't know. Uh, it's always maybe good to then say, but I'll look into it and get back to you. Um, but I, I think it's best to say that than rather try and answer it if you really don't know. <laughs> and so then you just kind of, you're just on the cuff and you, you can come across as a bit arrogant. And if somebody does actually know more than you, you can look like a bit of a fool. And that isn't a good witness at all. Um, so be prepared to humbly say, I don't know. Lots of things I don't know about. I don't know. And then I, I think this is quite an important one. We, 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 at people in our society, we use the expression, I feel or I believe a lot, don't we? Um, and, and I think that kind of, that, that's probably part of our individualistic kind of culture. I feel, I believe. I think when, when, when you've got the chance to dis- describe or declare a, a truth, about the Bible, maybe don't say, I believe this. Maybe say the Bible says. Because that's placing the authority uh, uh, and making sure that people know that this isn't just something that you believe or feel. This is actually, this is something the Bible says. And that actually might just instigate a conversation more because what do you mean the Bible says? Um, Because everybody has beliefs and feelings. And people will say, well, that's your truth. Tell me yours. Uh, tell me mine, and, and etc. Sorry, my brain is even slower than normal this evening. So I, I, I succumbed to the marketing of Blue Spark helps brighten your mind. This uh, smoothie, and I don't think it's worked. <laughs> um, where uh, and and also I haven't got it on here, but I think in, if we can, and if it, if it is has become a conversation, you got to watch out for red herrings. Uh, whenever I was uh, in the cafe, I thought, yes, this is a great opportunity. And all of a sudden, just out of nowhere, this, 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 this conversation uh, that had nothing to do with what we were talking about happens. And so we've got to be aware of the, the red herrings. And then um, with that, if we can, we always want to try and bring it back to Jesus. I mean, I know that isn't easy. Um, but at the end of the day, talking about science or the, the reason for why Christianity and science are compatible, that's great, but at the end of the day, we do kind of want to, it might not be in that conversation, again, it, 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 trusting in the sovereignty of God means that we, we need to know when to end the conversation and trust that another conversation will happen, um, but uh, there may be just a few things I've read and learnt uh, along the way, anybody else kind of got anything else or anything to add? Anybody talk about anything different to those things? That's good. Seems like we've covered covered the, the main the main things. A- again, these aren't these are not silver bullets because everybody's different and every context is different. And one conversation and one question that works with somebody won't necessarily work with somebody else. It, that's just that, that's just life. Um, so we 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 need wisdom, uh, as as Paul writes in Colossians. Right, scenarios. Now, this is going to either crash and burn <laughs> or be really helpful. Uh, and and it, it really depends on your imagination in this, because it could be that you just write, well, just one answer. Uh, it might be worth actually doing a bit of role playing. Maybe somebody, you, somebody takes the place of the, the antagonist and, you, you know, it, but, but it'll get you into the, the potential of these conversations. Um, you've got... I think you've all got different scenarios on the table there. Um, just have a few minutes just thinking about them, uh, talking about how you might answer, uh, and then we'll, we'll, we'll go from there.
How, how are we all doing? Do we need, do you want a little bit longer? Longer? Do you want longer? Does anybody want another scenario? <laughs> Thank you. 
Let's have one more minute. Anybody want another scenario that you want to just kind of go on ahead? Do you ever ask a question as a child or something like it or something? <laughs> Right, let's um let's bring the conversations to a close. Um, right, we're gonna we're gonna attempt to try and feed back. Uh, I, uh, but by the way, most of these scenarios are based off actual things that happened, uh, most of them, uh, either in my life or somebody else's life, uh, or, or somebody else's life. Um, <laughs> um, uh, right, who is, no, who is number one? Who had scenario number one? You guys, okay. Uh, so scenario number one, uh, there was an extra little um, uh, conversation uh, happened a question or thing that happened but the, f the first bit was if, if someone said what goes around comes around that's karma how could you respond as I say, I, I say how could you respond because I don't think necessarily there's one right answer um, you know there's, there's various responses we could give but yep yeah I think we just went with the idea of asking back that what do you mean by karma what do you mean by um, you know is it Asking them because you know, it's like your know, good things happen to good people, but as as Matt pointed out, rich kids get better presents from Santa Claus rather than poor good kids. Um, so it's a uh, yeah. so there's a question we ask that you know like how do you you know like, there's lots of people in history who were in quite prominent positions who were bad. Yeah. And so but, how do you figure that out? So. I, yeah, I think that's a good start. I, but I think this is a more common thought than we perhaps realize that if people have this kind of idea that you know some kind of karma philosophy it's, it's really popular um, so we, we've got to kind of just be aware of it and I think yes a, a beginning of a conversation like that would help and then um, I think this 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 People talk about that tower people. Yeah, yeah. No, no, yeah, yeah. Def de certainly, it, not not necessarily karma, but certainly, yeah. The Pharisees believed that you know you were sinner. If you're a sinner, and you've 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 you, you know you've, you've lived your life ill all your life, it's because you've been a sinner. You know, there's there's a correlation between your life, what what your your struggles and your suffering, and the fact that you must be sinning. Um, not always the case. Uh, yeah, and then that, that's, uh, I think that just adds probably, I believe, there's some kind of spiritual life. You know, um, most people, I don't think most people are atheists. Most people have some kind of spiritual kind of dimension. It's just not, ask them to explain it and they probably can't, but there is some kind of spiritual um, thing that they believe in. Um, uh, yeah, but I mean, not even yeah to a degree agnostic. But I think it's probably it's an impersonal spiritual spirituality that requires no nothing on their part. Um, not most of the time, I think um, that's just my experience anyway. Um, you may have had different. Let's just go on to scenario two. Who, who had scenario two? Uh, Rachel's table. A friend says to you that most people are basically good. Um, 
How could you respond? There's a little bit of overlap on some of these, but I, I, again, I think this is quite a, a popular assumption. Uh, well, first of all, I think we need to ask them what do they mean by basically good? Because uh, when we're talking about good as human beings, we're often comparing ourselves to <laughs> other people. So, uh, yeah, I might be basically good if you put me up against Adolf Hitler. <laughs> <laughs> There's no mic. But, <laughs> <laughs> I, did use, I was head girl at school and people used to walk around shouting, Hitler, Heil Hitler to me. Oh um, and uh, yeah, so. We'll <laughs> but I wasn't now. horrible. I just wanted prefects to be doing what they should do at the right time. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm not sure you'd mentioned that in the conversation. No, I wouldn't. No, no sorry. Like Pulling it back, yeah. <laughs> so um, we want to know what they meant by basically good. So you could then sort of talk around that issue. So. We then thought that the person might admit quite easily that not everybody is perfect. Um, um, and then eventually you'd want to get it on to Jesus being the only good person that's ever lived. I, I anticipated that. I think in the next, in the, in the next yeah. one, what, what's the scenario to the, yeah. what's so different about Jesus? Mm. I, I, that, if somebody asks that, that's the best, one of the best, I think that's probably very rare. I was probably being a little bit kind of nice to you. I, I, I think if that happens in a conversation, you sing hallelujah and kind of just go for it. But, um, well, maybe not, because <laughs> um, you know what I mean. Um, well, we thought you could probably, what you need to do with the person is if they think they are good um, and they're, their idea of, uh, well, I'm not perfect, but I'm, uh, you, you need to find out, you need to sort of ask them questions that would reveal, if the, the Holy Spirit's at work in them, would reveal that they aren't as good as they think they are. So, yep. um, you know, if they're a parent, you could ask them, well, did you ever teach your child to do that? Or, you know, have you ever told a lie? You know, we hate it. People hate being lied to. Mm. Don't they? They absolutely hate. They've got this sense of people mustn't lie to me, yet willingly lie to other people. And also, we said about being honest as well, because Christians are often seen as being holier than thou. Mm. Um, so just saying, well, you know, I've told a few lies in my time, and you know, just being honest, and and then yep. showing that there's a reason why we've gone to Jesus. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, helpful. Um, let's move on. Sorry, I know we could spend more time. Scenario three. Uh, okay, this is quite, I think this is a difficult one. Um, um, yeah, two work colleagues are speaking about a fire that's killed two people, a mother and a child, so it's a really horrible situation. It looks like arson as well, so it's, it's a crime. Uh, in a sense, maybe if it wasn't arson, it would be even harder. Uh, just a random act of suffering. Uh, one of them says, where's the justice in the world? That's a, that's a common cry I think you hear in the news in various ways. Um, where's the justice in the world? How, how do you begin to answer that? Who's, num who's, who's number three? Oh, you had a hard, you had a hard <laughs> one then. <laughs> <laughs> we jumped on to the next question. <laughs> You know what, I, I think that might be in a bit where you just lament with them yeah. and you just say, look, life can be brutal at times. And if they know you're a Christian, you can say, look, the Bible is very realistic. Uh, death is just a reality and it's horrible. And it really, I'm not sure you necessarily want to go further than that, unless depending on the relationship and where, I, I don't know if you would want to try and kind of move it to the, you know, the cross and, you know, etc. Um, I don't know. Um, and then the fairness question kind of, I think, is another thing that people might ask in one way or another. How is it fair that they've died and gone to hell if they're not Christians? There's, I think suffering and then hell are two of the biggest barriers in people's heads. Um, and they come in different guises in different ways. Um, yeah. I mean, again, is, is there, 
what, how did you even make a stab at that? Did you? I, I spoke about freedom of choice. Yeah. That uh, one thing that our relationship with God is he allows us to choose. And if people, I mean, if I choose to come up and bash you on the nose, it's not God's fault. You know, it's my fault. And if an, somebody, an arsonist, does this type of thing, then it's their fault. Uh, but, the, but the people who do die, they've got that ability to be able to choose their relationship with God. And they're going to go to glory if they believe in Jesus. You know? I think that's quite a good positive way of putting yeah. it. Yeah. I, again, I think it's a very difficult question. I, I say, that would be a, a very hard scenario to be in. I, I wouldn't uh, say that directly to people. <laughs> you know, oh, it's okay. They're going to. Well, again, yeah. it would depend on the relationship, wouldn't it? It would depend on your relationship with the two work colleagues. How well, you, again, so this is why where scenarios are a little bit, um, yeah, um, you've got to allow for. Right, scenario four. Um, why, why is it that this comes up every time, the second one? Have I, have I done something wrong in the. Ah, uh, there we go. Uh, a friend talks about how. Yeah, this is. Oh, sorry, this this is probably the hardest one. Uh, a friend. Who's scenario four? Oh yeah. Okay. Sorry, guys. A friend talks about how their grand. This was Hannah's. Um, by the way, Hannah thought we should put this in, and, <laughs> and then went off on a, to America. Uh, a friend talks about how their grandson has been diagnosed with cancer. Uh, she knows you're a Christian, so there's a good relationship here. Um, You've had a conversation before, and she says to you, how could God let this happen? To be honest, we struggled. <laughs> but um, it, it is hard, and we wanted really to address the question, but um, it really depends on the relationship. Um, and in the first instance, I think compassion towards the person um, and um, you know you can't always explain that there is suffering one of the things we did say was that um, Jesus lost a friend and he wept that's a good yeah uh, Lazarus is too um, and so he knows how we feel about things um, and God um, it is in that situation um, God is not responsible for sin and corruption in the world um, whether you can actually say that to somebody um, in yeah. this situation is difficult but it it is one of those sort of things yeah it's, yeah it's a very difficult one I I, I mean I yeah do, do you have uh, something to add can you can yeah, sure. Just get, wait, this is this is more this is more for people in the room can hear it than I think people online can generally hear because it gets picked up. But I, I always feel like that in God's eyes, the length of somebody's life is they're sort of equal value. So that child's life is going to be of equal value to God if it's two years or if it's 102 years. We think that somebody who lives a very long life is more valuable or that's the mm. right. Yeah, do you know what I mean? I don't know whether this comes from having a brother who's handicapped, but I feel like, you know, their life is just as valuable. Mm. Other people would think their life's not because they're handicapped, you know. And that's, uh, maybe it's not a helpful thing to say in this circumstance, but I think I'd probably say that that little grandson is, is just as valuable, however short his life might be, if it is short, obviously. Mm. Yeah, that's helpful. That's helpful. Um, it obviously depends on the relationship, but um, obviously, in some situations, if a friend allows you to pray and pray with them, yeah. then you can pray, Lord, we don't understand what's going on. This is horrible. We want it to go away. We can say all those things and echo scripture, or we can share those scriptures with them and say, what you said made me think of this part of the Bible. Mm -hmm. And sometimes people are very surprised to see those things in the Bible. And they think that is saying exactly what I want to say. And just sharing with them that they might never know it's there otherwise and then just let, letting God do his work in that way and then obviously being open to, to yeah, just yeah. support them physically but I think knowing that they, that's okay to say to God and that's a question that's age old and that you know that that is the relationship we have with him. Yeah thank, so. I think that's really important I think that's uh, you can always ask somebody can I pray for you yeah. 
And I, I think I've heard more often than not, they will people will say yes, yeah, especially if you if you're in a relationship with them. Um, and yeah, I think that's a good way of yeah. Can I pray for you? And then you, you lament with them again, don't you, in your prayer? I think that's really important. Um, yeah. Um, there is there is there is a further comment that could be made on this. Um, depending on who you are, you can answer with a question. Um, we don't expect to bury our children, but some of us have, have that experience. And it's only faith that gets you through it. Yeah. 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 Uh, thank you for sharing. Let's move on to scenario five. I think a less... Oh, yeah, let, we'll, we, won't, we won't touch on that. Um, that's a... Again, that's, we've probably covered that in other... Scenario five. Uh, so this is... I gave this to you guys, because <laughs> some of you are still at school. Um, and I think this is probably quite common, I think, although I haven't been to high school for quite a while. Um, is it, st is in terms of maybe not speaking it, but assuming it, um, if a friend said to you, I believe in science, not God, what yeah, would you so do? The things that I like to say is they're not mutually exclusive. Great. So, like, just because science says something doesn't mean that the Bible necessarily disagrees. Um... Like we we've done at youth before that um, you know science can be summarised as the what and how things happen, but that's meaningless if you don't have who and why it happens. Um, I think there's there's a lot of stuff you could say about that, and you know this is a good one for me because I I do science at college, so uh, I get I get this kind of idea quite a lot. Um, and another thing is like. Um, Lots of stuff that people have problems with aren't explicitly contradicted in the Bible. People think, they just assume that there is uh, a disparity between them. Uh, but So the Bible doesn't say that the universe was created by a big bang. It just says that God created the universe. When God says, let there be light, that could appear to humans as a big bang. I'm not going to say that it was a big bang, because that's not my place to say I'm not God. But... You know, it, it, they don't have to contradict. There's no, you know, an example Brandon gave was is that some people have a problem that the Bible says, is the phrase they use, that the earth is 8,000 years old. But there's no verse that says the earth is 8,000 years old. There is no direct problem you can actually have with it. Um, yeah. yeah, I reckon that's probably more controversial between Christians, so let's move on. Um, <laughs> uh, uh, well, the, 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 the extra question probably, I think, um, if you put up Noah, um, uh, it, it is probably something that I think somebody would say at some point, you may have heard it in some way. Um, uh, briefly, how would you answer that? Show us one. Show us one. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But, you know, but, but what happens if somebody did show you an apparent contradiction? Look at Brilliant. Okay. Uh, that's good. Uh, sounds, that sounds like you've uh, thought about that. Uh, um, right. Uh, I think there's only five tables. I went a little bit crazy. I did about 12 scenarios. Um, but it's now nearly 20 past seven. So uh, just quickly, just press on scenario six. Uh, no. Scenario six. Yeah. Just go, go back. Just quick. <laughs> Not to the end, bro. Uh, so th this is one I think maybe could happen. In, in a neighbour says, I went to church as a child. I've grown out of it now. Um, I move on. Scenario seven. Uh, a work colleague says in a, in a lunch, in a group, you're part of it. All religions are the same. That, that's, I think that's, yeah. I hear that in various different ways. Uh, and especially Bud Buddhism is really popular. Um, so I think, we, you know, it might be worth studying up on Buddhism a little bit in all its varieties because um, um, yeah people like it, it's attractive um, so scenario 8 uh, child, so I, you know we've got to think of scenarios in church as well um, so this, this could happen um, uh, scenario 9 um, uh, this, hap this happens to me over a cup of coffee, I've got a friend who's in his 60s um, he likes his conspiracy theories but he's got onto the idea that there's such a thing as good and evil. Yeah. Um, but it's because the government's evil. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> um, uh, yeah I mean, it's a, a certain demographic, speaking to people about conspiracy theories, a certain age, again, 
being aware of how to answer those questions is not, not easy, because it can really frustrate you. Um, uh, so you've, you've got to pray for patience uh, and grace. Um, yes, um, scenario 10. Um, uh, this happened to me. Um, not in Cafe 139, in another cafe. He was just really loud. And so I said loudly to him, you're wrong. <laughs> um, uh, and thankfully, um, that led to a conversation. And he did actually end up, he, he came to church the following Sunday. Um, he didn't come to church after that, unfortunately. But yeah, uh, that, that requires knowledge. Uh, if you don't know what you're talking about, just say, I don't know. Well, maybe don't chime in. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Uh, next one. Um, yeah, similar. And then uh, I think this happens. This, this, this what I put, because it may not be a daughter, but somebody might ring you up or it might not be on the phone. What have you done this week? And that's a really good opportunity. If you've, if you've, if you've been to the prayer meeting, if you've been to church on a Sunday, lead with that instead of, oh, I watched the, I watched the great, a great <laughs> film. Or, you know, you know or, or, um, Ask them what they've done over the weekend and pray that they ask in response, well, what have you done over the weekend? Uh, again, just I think things like that might just help. Um, but again, there's no silver bullet. So that's, that's 12 scenarios. Uh, you could come up with loads more. I don't know whether you'd want to try and do more in the future. Um, uh, you can maybe do it with in, a, in small groups or in some kind of group. Uh, in fact, there's a, uh, we might. Did you say we might do this more in small groups this week? Yes. So think of scenarios that you might have come across in small groups. Uh, is there all the small group leaders here? Uh, Mike, are you doing small group for? No. Nope. Is it Phil? Can you? Okay. Do, Fine, if you, if you want to finish the book, some people have finished the book, um, but that is something we might look at in small groups. And again, let's be praying, let's be thinking about how we can make the most of, of opportunities. Uh, let me pray and then we'll, we'll bring it to a close. Um, Heavenly Father, we, we pray for your help in this area, Lord. Uh, we're keen that we, we know our, our weaknesses, we know our failings, perhaps we beat ourselves up too much. Lord, give us wisdom for knowing when the opportunities come and what to say. Uh, Lord, may you equip us from this evening so that we might actually put this into practice this week, Lord. Would your spirit be at work, Lord? Help us to be praying for opportunities and help us to make the most of those opportunities when they come. Amen. Amen. Uh, yeah, move on to the next slide. Sorry. Uh, I always recommend books. Um, that I haven't got uh, tactics. I've only got on Kindle. So sorry. Um, but it is good. He's, he's, he's basically questions uh, a lot of it. He's got a Cluedo one as well. So he almost like, you know, Cluedo when he kind of leaves, almost leaves the room and then just kind of says, well, have you thought about this? Um, um, if you were at Connected Conference, how to talk about Jesus without looking like an idiot. That's a great title in it. Um, um, the talk's great. I haven't read the book. Um, and then next one, have you ever wondered? Um, and apathyism, I think, best explains the majority of people in our country. Uh, they're, not, they're not atheists. They're apathetic. And this just helps try and diagnose that a little bit. If you want to borrow that, you can do. Uh, and then next, uh, next table talk. I thought we'd change. I think we've spent a lot of table talks on evangelism or some kind of, I think it's time to change a little bit and, and think about uh, some other things. So we're going to look at prayer, uh, God willing, next month. So thank you.